السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله اللهم رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل العقدة من لسان يفقه قولي زاد المستقنع في اختصار المقنع with إمام الحجاوي he is reached now we've reached with him باب صلاة العيدين the chapter pertaining to the two Eids speaking about the fiqh and issues pertaining to the two Eids the word Eid comes from عادة يعود عودا عادة يعود عودا which means to recur time and time again so Eid is مشتق from this verb عادة يعود عودا to return time and time again because of course we know the Eids they return every year at a particular time and also we have the Yawm al which is a Eid for us a weekly returning the author he says وَهِيَ فَرْضُ kifaya. it is فَرْضُ kifaya, meaning that if a portion of the community establish this act of worship then that is well and good and if they do not establish the worship then the sin falls upon the whole community until the act of worship is established Sheikh Hamad he quotes he said, it's Fadl Kifaya, one of the rules they have لأنها شعيرة من شعر الإسلام الظاهرة because it's one of the symbols from the apparent clear symbols of Islam والقائدة في شعيرة الظاهرة كالأذان and the rule pertaining to the apparent symbols of Islam like the Adhan أنها فرض كفاية that it is Fadl Kifaya so anything which is an apparent symbol of Islam which is done openly um, like for example uh, the Salat al-Eid, Salat al-Istisqa etc and uh, the Adhan then it's Fadlun Kifaya and also the ulama of the uh, Madhab they reached this conclusion that it's Fadlun Kifaya by looking at the evidences so they understood that this is not Sunnah not Sunnah Mu'akkada so they looked at the position of it being Sunnah Mu'akkada and they looked at the position of it being fardu'ain, meaning wajib upon every individual. And they said it's neither sunnah mu'akkada nor is it fardu'ain, rather it's in between the two. It's fardu kifaya. It's a fard which is not upon each individual, but rather upon a group in the community. That if a sufficient number of people in the community establish it, then that is well and good. So how did they reach this? They have, for example, the evidence in Abu Da'ud, the hadith of Ubadah ibn Samit radiallahu anhu, where the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said خَمْسُ صَلَوَاتٍ كَتَبَهُنَّ اللَّهُ عَلَى الْإِبَادِ فِي الْيَوْمِ وَالْلَيْلَةِ There are five daily prayers that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has obligated upon the slaves in the day and the night. So this is the position of those who say it's sunnah mu'akkada. They use this evidence. So the humble scholars, they said it's, it's not sunnah mu'akkada, meaning, sorry, it's not fardu'ayn because of this evidence. This evidence shows that it's Sunnah Mu'akkada, but to take it further than it being Sunnah Mu'akkada, they have the fact that the Prophet وسلم, and the Khulafa al Rashidin, they had muadaba upon this Salah, they had continuity upon this Salah, always praying Salat al Eid, which shows that it's something which is beyond Sunnah Mu'akkada. And then also you have the other position, which is the second position in the Madhab, the second riwayah of Imam Ahmad, that it's Fardu Ain, and this was chosen by Ibn Taymiyyah and Ibn Qayyim and others. And the position of it being fardu'ain, an individual obligation, was established by a range of evidences. One of them that we'll look at was being in the Quran where Allah says, فصلي لربك وانحر. فصلي لربك وانحر. They said that this verse was revealed pertaining to the Salat al Eid, that O Muhammad وسلم, pray. So when Allah is giving the command to pray, that means it's, it's a fardu'ain, it's going to be an obligation upon every individual. Because the verse فَصَلِّي لِرَبِّكَ وَالْحَرْ was revealed المراد بصلاة صلاة العيد was revealed pertaining to صلاة العيد So again the humbly scholars they looked at the evidence of it being uh, Sunnah Mu'akkada okay and they said it's not Sunnah Mu'akkada it's something beyond that but neither is it this position that I just mentioned now of it being فرض العين فرض upon every individual they said it's a position in between the two okay which is فرض الكفاية the author he says إِذَا تَرَكَهَا أَهْلُ الْبَلَدٍ قَاتَلَهُمُ الْإِمَامِ If the people of a particular land leave off the Salah in totality and they do not establish it, meaning that nobody prays their Salat al-Aid, then the Imam, the leader of the Muslims or the leader of the land, he has to fight them. 
And this fighting is due to the refusal of the people to establish this apparent sha'ira, this apparent symbol of Islam, because it's min sha'ir al-Islam al-Dahira. Okay, any apparent symbol of Islam which is left off in totality, then the Imam of the Muslims, the leader of the Muslims, will fight the people until they return to establishing that sha'ira. <coughs> Excuse me. Until they return to establishing that symbol of Islam. The fighting here is not done out of them being kuffar. They are not held to be kuffar, those who leave of the salah. Rather, it is a type of ta'zir. It is a type of um, disciplining the people. So they are fought. Uh, they're not fought in the first instance. In the first instance, they are taught about the importance of the salah. They're reminded that they should establish the salah and what would happen if they do not do so. If they continue to refuse to pray the salah, then in this instance, the imam, he would fight them as a ta'zir until they return to establishing the salah. The time of salatul eid is from salat, the time, same time as salatul duha. And the last of it, the end time of the Salatul Eid is the Akhir Waqtul Zawal. Akhiruhu Waqtul Zawal. That the end time of it is the time of Zawal. So when the Salatul Duha starts, we know that Salatul Duha starts, Min Tulu' al Shams, Irtifa'uha Qaydul Rumh. That when the sun has risen above the horizon, and the eye can see that it's risen above, beyond the horizon, more than a space length, that is when the time of Salatul Duha starts. So basically, after sunrise, from around 10 to 15 minutes or so, that is when the time of the Salah would start and its end time is when it's time of Zawal, when the time of Dhuhr comes in. He says, فَإِن لَمْ يُعْلَمْ بِالْعِيدِ إِلَّا بَعْدَهُ صَلُّوا مِنَ الْغَدِ If the people, they don't come to know that it was Eid, okay, except until after Zawal, except until after Dhuhr has come in, then they would pray it from the next day as Qada. They would pray it the next day as Qada, making up the Salah. Imam Ahmad and Abi Dawood, they collect the Hadith and it's authenticated by Ibn Mulaqqan in Badal al-Munir. The Hadith of Abi Umair ibn Anas ibn Malik, he said, أُغْمِيَ عَلَيْنَا هِلَالُ شَوَالِ فَأَصْبَحْنَا صِيَامًا He said that the Hilal of Shawal, meaning the month after Ramadan, the moon of that month was covered with clouds, etc., and we didn't see it. So therefore we got up and we fasted the 30th day. فَأَصْبَحْنَا صِيَامًا فَجَاءَ رَكْبٌ مِنْ آخر النَّهَارِ فَشَهِدُوا إِنْدَ النَّبِيِّ صَلَّى اللَّهِ عليه وسلم أَنَّهُمْ رَأُوا الْحِلَالِ بِالْأَمْسِ So then some riders, they came towards the end of the day and they said to the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم, they gave witness that we had seen the moon of Shawwal. Okay? They had seen the moon of Shawwal, so the Prophet ﷺ said, فَأَمَرَهُمْ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهِ وسلم أَنْ يُفْتِرُوا وَأَنْ يَخْرُجُوا إِلَىٰ إِيدِهِمْ مِنَ الْغَدِ So the Prophet ﷺ told the companions and the people to break their fasts for what was remaining of that day, the remainder of that day, and to go out and perform the Salat al-Eid the next day. So this alludes to what the author is saying, that if it's not known, the people for whatever reason, they don't realize that it's Salat al-Eid, that it's going to be Eid, except until after the zawal of the day, then they will make up the Salat al-Eid the next day. They will pray the next day as Qadha. The author, he says, وَتُسَنُّوا فِي sahra. It's highly recommended that the Salat al-Eid is prayed out in the open and not in the masajid. وَهَذَا بِاتِفَاقِ الْفُقَهَا حَكَّاهُ ابن حُبَيْرَ And this is by agreement of the ulama that it's sunnah to do that. And Ibn Hubayra was from amongst those, Rahimullah Ta'ala, who said that there is consensus, there is ijma upon this issue. So the ulama, they say that praying outside rather than, the mas rather than in the masajid, it shows the strength of Islam and it shows the symbol of Islam in a better way, meaning that the Eid, the people come together in their thousands, maybe even a hundred thousand, like some cities in Europe, like Birmingham, and they pray in such a way that when it, they are seen praying in that manner, outside in the open, it shows honor for Islam that this symbol is being honored in such a way outside. Also, we have in the hadith in Bukhari in Muslim, the hadith of Abi Sa'id al-Khudri radiyallahu anhu, where he said that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, kana rasulullahi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam yakhruj yawm al-fitr wal adha ila al-musalla wa awwala shayin yabda'u bihi al-salah. That the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, in this hadith of Abi Sa'id al-Khudri, he said that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would go out on the day of Eid and the day of al-adha, and he would pray 
to, they would go out to the musalla, meaning the open place outside of the masjid, away from the masjid. And the first thing that they would start with on that day was the salah. So this is the evidence to, sh to show that the Prophet ﷺ and the companions would go to the musalla and they wouldn't pray the Eid in the salah. And bearing in mind that praying the Eid in a masjid would have had a huge reward because in the Masjid al Nabi, the Masjid of the Prophet ﷺ, each salah is times multiplied by a thousand rewards. So bearing that in mind, the Prophet ﷺ knowing this, yet he still went out and he prayed the Eid salah in the open, therefore it's a highly recommended sunnah to do and it should be done wherever possible. The author, he said, may Allah have mercy upon him, وَتَقْدِيمُ الصَّلَاةِ الْأَضْحَى And that the Salatul Al-Adha, on Eid Al-Adha, that the Salah should be done quickly. وَعَكْسُهُ الْفِطْرِ But with regards to Eid Al-Fitr, then the Salatul Eid should be delayed slightly. Question to yourselves, why is it better to bring the Eid Al-Adha Salah closer what is the benefit in doing that and not to delay it to do it as quick as possible what is the benefit in praying either salah early either al salah exactly so we want the people to pray early so they can have enough time to go away and do the udhiya and also connected to that is the fact that it's sunnah for the people who are doing the udhiya not to eat until they've slaughtered and then they can eat something from the udhiya the kabut for example the liver Right? So this is the sunnah. So if we were to delay the Eid Salah, then this would make it difficult upon the people to do that. So why is it better then, second question, to delay Salat al-Fitr? We said for the Adha Salah, we bring it early as much as possible. But with regards to Eid al-Fitr, it's sunnah to delay it wherever we can. Why is it sunnah to do that? Why is it better to delay Eid al-Fitr? The wisdom is that the, so the Zakat al-Fitr can be distributed, right? Because it's sunnah to distribute the Zakat al-Fitr on the day of Eid. So you delay the Salat al-Eid al-Fitr so that before it the Zakat al-Fitr can be delayed and Allah subhanahu Zakat al-Fitr can be distributed to the people who need it and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best. The author he says وَأَكْلُهُ قَبْلَهَا and it's Sunnah to eat before it meaning the Eid al-Fitr. So we have in the Hadith of Bukhari Anas ibn Malik radiyallahu anhu he said, كان رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم لا يغضو يوم الفطر حتى يأكل تمرات ويأكلهن وترا. The Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم, as narrated by Anas ibn Malik in Bukhari, would not leave on the day of fitr, on Eid al-Fitr, except that he had eaten tamarat. Okay, and he would eat them these dates in the form of witr, meaning odd number. So the least of them that should be eaten is three, because the Hadith says يأكل تمرات. The Prophet ﷺ, he would eat dates. Dates was mentioned in plural, and the least of plural is three. What's the wisdom in eating before the Salah? The reason is, like the brother mentioned previously for the other question, that it's to stress that it's not Ramadan anymore. So nobody is waking up Sa'im. Rather, everybody is waking up Muftar. Everybody is waking up with Fitr, having eaten something, to stress that Ramadan is now over and now it's a day, day of joy, celebrating to eat and drink. The author, he says, وَعَكْسُهُ فِي الْأَضْحَى إِنْ ضَحَى And the opposite situation on Eid al-Adha, meaning that you don't eat before you leave for the uh, Salat al-Eid, rather you eat afterwards, because the Sunnah here is to eat after the sacrifice has been given for the one who is sacrificing. So all the, the author, he said, the opposite situation in Eid al-Adha for the one who is sacrificing. In uh, Abi Dawood, in Ahmed narrates, sorry, and Tirmidhi, that Abdullah ibn Buraida, he said, كَانَ النَّبِيُّ صَلَى اللَّهِ وسلم, لَا يَخْرُجُ يَوْمُ الْفِطْرِ حَتَّى يَطْعَمْ وَلَا يَطْعَمْ يَوْمُ الْأَضْحَى حَتَّى يُصَلِّي That the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم, he wouldn't go out on the day of Fitr until he had taken something to eat. Whereas on the day of Adha, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam wouldn't eat until he had finished the Eid prayer. Meaning he would finish the Eid prayer and then go and sacrifice the animal and then eat something from the sacrifice which had been done. The author, he says, fil bila udr. And to have the Eid Salah in a masjid, in the large masjid, is makru. It's disliked unless there's an excuse to do so. 
Why? Because they say أَنَّهُمْ مُخَالِفْ لِفَعْلِ النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم حَيْثُ لَمْ يُصَلِّ إِلَّا فِي الْمُصَلَّى خَارِجِ الْبَلَدِ That this is going against the way of the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم wherein he wouldn't pray inside the masjid unless there was a need for him to do so. He would always pray outside of the masjid. So from the needs, from the what is يُسْتَثْنَى مِنْ من الكراهة, what is uh, excluded from the ruling of being makru is the following two situations. Situation A where the people they are praying in Mecca, in the vicinity of Mecca al-Haram, because praying in the Haram, it has a huge reward, and that reward should not be lost of 100,000 salawat, and also because the land surrounding the Haram is uh, very mountainous, so it's difficult to get out there and to pray in those regions. Uh, the second point, the second uh, exception from the ruling that we just mentioned, is that if the day is uh, very windy and it's raining or something of that nature, or there is an enemy nearby, then in these situations, of course, the people, they don't have to go out and pray in the Sahara or pray in the Musalla in an open area. If the people do choose to go out and pray, then the Imam of the locality should ensure that there is somebody in the Masjid for those who are too old or too weak or who are unable to get out and pray in the Musalla, then they also have the chance to pray Salat al-Eid in the Masjid because this was done by Ali radiallahu anhu when he was leading the Muslims. And this was mentioned by Shaykh Fahad al-Mutiri, Hafidhahullah ta'ala. The author, he says, وَيُسَنُّ تَكْبِيرُ الْمَعْمُومِ وَيُسَنُّ تَكْبِيرُ مَعْمُومٍ إِلَيْهَا مَاشِيًا بَعْدَ الصُّبْحِ And it's recommended, it's sunnah, that the ma'moom, the ones who are going to pray, that they go there as early as possible, walking after the morning prayer. Okay, so they go as early as possible, walking after the morning prayer, because to go to the musalla and to sit and to wait for the salah is a ribat, right? Al intidar, to, to sit waiting for one salah to the next salah is a huge reward, as mentioned by the Prophet. So it's sunnah to go early, to sit in the place, and to wait for the salat al Eid. With regards to walking to the masjid, we know that this is sunnah and it has many virtues, but um, Abu al Mu'ali. Imam Abu Al-Mu'ali rahimahullah ta'ala, he said, if the land is thaghran, meaning that the land where the Muslims are going to pray is between a Muslim land and between a non-Muslim land, then in this situation, it's better for the Muslims to ride upon their horses and to have their gleaning, glistening swords with them so as to show strength and honor to the non-Muslims who are observing what the Muslims are doing. So in other cases, it's um, recommended to walk but in the situation with the land is Thagran, a land which is between the land of the Muslims and the land of the non-Muslims, then it's better to show this honor uh, when celebrating Eid that the people, they ride their horses and they have their glistening swords, etc. with them. And this was mentioned by Shaykh Mutlaq Jasr, Hafidullah Ta'ala. وَتَأَخْرُوا إِمَامٍ إِلَى وَقْتِ الصَّلَاةِ And it's sunnah that the imam, he doesn't do like the people are doing. So the people are going and it's recommended for them to go early to the musalla for Salat al-Eid, but for the Imam, it's better for him to delay. Delay until the prayer is about to be established. Why? Because in Bukhari and Muslim, we have the hadith of Abi Sa'id radiallahu anhu, where he said, كان رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم يخرج يوم الفطر والأضحى إلى المصلى فأول شيء يبدأ به الصلاة That the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم, he would leave to go on the day of fitr and adha to the musalla and the first thing that he would do is that he would pray. So this hadith of Jabir in uh, Abi Sa'id, sorry, in Bukhari Muslim, shows that the Prophet ﷺ would come directly to the musalla only to pray. He wouldn't come before that to sit or to make any takbirat. Rather, he would come at the time of the prayer as close as possible. So the sunnah for the imam is to come close as possible to the time of establishing the salah. The author, he says, Ala ahsani hay'atin, That the person, the people, they should come out in the best of appearance. They should wear the best of appearance like Salatul Juma and even more. Ibn Umar, as collected by Imam Bayhaqi in Sunan al Kubra, and Imam Nawi Rahimullah Ta'ala said it's authentic in Khulasat al Ahkam, said that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam he would make ghusl on the Eid al Fitr before he would go off to the Musalla to pray Eid. So this shows that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is taking care to appear in the best way possible in the Salah. The author, he makes istithna, he makes exception. He says, إِلَّا مُعْتَكِفْ إِلَّا 
ففي ثياب اعتكافه okay he said except for the one who was making اعتكاف in the masjid so Ramadan has come to an end now and it's Salat al-Eid and there were people that were making اعتكاف in the masjid for the last 10 days the author Hajjawi rahimullah ta'ala he's saying that these people it's better for them that they stayed in the masjid until Salat al-Fajr they pray Salat al-Fajr yawm al-Eid and then they go out to the place of uh, to the musalla where the Eid Salah is going to be prayed right and the reason they mention this and this is the mashur the mashur opinion in the madhab the famous opinion in the madhab the reason they mention this they say that the athar the effect of worship after 10 days the people are going to be slightly disheveled their clothes are not going to be ironed right they're going to be creased because they were worshiping for 10 days in the masjid uh, you know staying away from everything pertaining to the dunya so the athar of the ibadah is going to be upon them and when they come to the Salat al-Eid in this state, then this is something which is going to be beloved by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and more hopeful in Allah azza wa jal rewarding them for the Salat al-Eid because they're in a state which is uh, carrying the effects of ibadah. Ibn Taymi rahimahullah wa ta'ala in a second opinion in the madhab, he said no, rather everybody including these mu'takif, including the one who's making atikaf, should rather return to their houses, make ghusl, put on their best clothes, and they should go to Salat al-Eid. So Ibn Taymiyyah, he had a different opinion in the Madhab. The author, he says, وَمِنْ شَرْطِهَا الْإِسْتِطَانِ And from the conditions of Salat al-Eid being Fard al-Kifaya is that there has to be istitan. Meaning to say that people, like we discussed in Salat al-Jum'ah, the fiqh of Jum'ah, people have to be residents of that land. So if there's people in that land, for example, who are uh, travelers, right? There's 50 travelers in that land and there's no residents for whatever reason. Then those 50 travelers, they are not able to establish Salat al-Eid because Salat al-Eid is not going to be fard upon them. Salat al-Eid only becomes fard upon the residents of a land, including the next condition where the author said, وَعَدُدُ الْجُمْعَةِ And the number of them, of these residents, must be 40 and above, okay? If they're under 40, then Salat al-Eid cannot be established according to this opinion. The author says, لا إذن الإمام is not a condition for the validity or for the uh, establishment of Salat al-Eid as Fad al-Kifaya that the permission of the leader of the Muslims has to be gotten like in Salat al-Jum'ah. However, again, if there's going to be a ta'addud, if there's going to be many salawat, okay, in different parts of the land, then of course this should be organized and done through the awqaf, done through the Ministry of Islamic Affairs, which is regulated by the leader of the land, otherwise there will be chaos. Everybody doing salah whenever they want to do it and wherever they want to do it. So if there's going to be more than one salat al-Eid, okay, more than one musalla in the land, then this should be regulated by the leader of the Muslims or one he has delegated to regulate the Islamic Affairs. The author he says, وَيُسَنُّ أَنْ يَرْجِعَ مِنْ طَرِيقٍ آخر. It's recommended highly that the people when they go out to Salat al-Eid, they take one path getting to the Musalla and on the way back they take a, di a different path. In Bukhari we have the hadith of Jabir ibn Abdullah where he said, كَانَ النَّبِي صَلَّى اللَّهِ وَسَلَّمْ إِذَا كَانَ الْيَوْمَ الْإِيدِ خَالَفَ الطَّرِيقِ That the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, if it was the day of Eid, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would take a different path meaning he would take one path to the Musalla and a different path on the way back. Some of the ulama, like Mutlaq Jasad, they mentioned that there's wisdoms to doing this. From the wisdoms of this, taking different paths, is that um, when you take a different path, you're going to bump into more people. So on the way to the masjid, you're going to see a group of people and you will greet them with the Eid greetings. And then on the way back, in a different path, you're going to see a different group of people and you would also greet them with uh, Eid greetings. So it's better in that sense of spreading the love and spreading the harmony of Salat al-Eid that you will come across more people and you will be able to spread more greetings. And also a second uh, benefit, a wisdom of this uh, Sunnah, and there's many, is that, the prophet, is that the earth gives witness to this good deed of you taking, uh, you know, walking to an act of worship and you're walking away from an act of worship, making the takbirat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and meeting people and greeting them with Eid. This is an act of worship. So different parts of the earth will give witness to this great act of worship. And that is better for the believer. 
The author, he said, وَيُصَلِّهَا رَكَعَتَيْنْ قَبْلَ الْخُطْبَةِ That the rakatain, the two raka of Eid, are to be prayed before the khutbah. Okay? So in Salat al-Jum'ah, the khutbah is short for the validity of the salah. That's why it's preceded the mashrut, which is the salah. So the khutbah of Jum'ah is before the salah as a shart, as a condition for the validity of uh, the Jum'ah prayer. Whereas here, the Eid prayer itself is sunnah, okay? The Eid uh, khutbah is sunnah and the, uh, the, the uh, salah is fard. That's, for, that's why the fard takes precedence over the uh, khutbah. And also we have it in the sunnah that the Prophet وسلم, in Bukhari and Muslim as narrated by Ibn Umar, Ibn Umar radiyallahu anhumah, he said, كَانَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَّى اللَّهِ وَسَلَّمْ وَأَبُوْ بَكْرْ وَعُمَرْ يُصَلُّونَ الْعِيدِ قَبْلَ الْخُطْبَةِ That Abu Bakr, along with the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in his time, then the time of Abu Bakr, then the time of Umar radiyallahu anhumah, that they would pray Eid before the khutbah. Okay, so the sunnah is to ensure that the Eid is prayed before the khutbah. The author, he says, يُكَبِّرُوا فِي الْأُولَى بَعْدِ الْإِحْرَامِ وَالْإِسْتِفْتَاهِ That takbir is made in the first raka'ah after takbirat al-ihram and making the opening dua of the salah, dua al-istiftah and qabla ta'awud. Okay, so after you made the takbirat al-ihram, the first takbir, and you made the opening dua, then you make the takbirat of the Eid salah. And then you make the ta'awud, you seek refuge in Allah, a'udhu billahi min shaytanir rajeem. Then you recite Surah Al-Fatiha and you continue. So he said, يُكَبِّرُ فِي الْأُولَى بَعْدَ الْإِحْرَامِ وَالْإِسْتِفْتَاهِ So you make the takbir, okay, in the first raka'ah, after takbirat al-ihram, and after dua al-istiftah, qabla ta'awud, before seeking refuge in Allah, wal-qira'ati sittan, and before reciting anything from the Qur'an, Surah Al-Fatiha, or the other surahs that come after it, six times. So this means that after you have made takbirat al-ihram, there's going to be another six takbirat after the dua al-istiftah. وَفِي الثَّانِيَةِ قَبْلَ الْقِرَاءَةِ خَمْسٍ And in the second raka'ah, there's going to be five takbirat. So the Prophet ﷺ in Abi Dawood and Ahmad, the hadith of Amru ibn Shu'ayb and Abihi and Jaddihi, that Amru ibn Shu'ayb from his father and his grandfather narrated, and the Nabi ﷺ كَبَّرَ فِي إِيدْ ثِنْتَيْ عَشْرَةَ تَكْبِيرَةً سَبْعًا فِي الْأُولَى وَخَمْسًا فِي الْآخِرَةِ That the Prophet ﷺ in the Eid Salah, he made 12 takbirat, okay? Seven in the first rakah and five in the next rakah, in the second rakah. The author, he says, يَرْفَعُ يَدَيْهِ مَا كُلِّ تَكْبِيرَةٍ It's sunnah that the person raises his hands, okay, with every takbir that is given in the salah. Because Wa'il ibn Hujr in Ahmad and Abi Dawood said the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu أَنَّهُ رَأَى رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صلى الله عليه وسلم يَرْفَعُ يَدَيْهِ مَعَ كُلِّ تَكْبِيرًا That Wa'il ibn Hujr رضي الله عنه He saw the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم raise his hands with every takbir. With every time the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم would make takbir, then the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم would raise his hands. Imam Ahmad, he said, أَمَّا أَنَا فَأَرَى أَنَّ هَذَا الْحَدِيثِ يَدْخُلُ فِيهِ هَذَا كُلُّهُ He said, as for me, Imam Ahmad is saying, رحمه الله تعالى, as for me, I see this hadith enters upon all of the different salawat, like for example Salat al-Eid, Salat al-Jinazah, Salat al-Istisqa, every time the takbirs are made, then the person is to raise their hands. And Imam al-Baghawi, rahimullah ta'ala, in Sharh al-Sunnah, he said, وَرَفُوا الْيَدَيْنْ فِي تَكْبِيرَاتِ الْعِيدِ سُنَّةٌ in the أَكْثَرِ أَهْلِ الْعِلْمِ That to raise your hands in the takbirat of Eid, every time the takbir is made in the Eid salah, is a sunnah according to most of the ulama, according to Imam al-Baghawi in Sharh al-Sunnah. The author he says, ويقول الله أكبر كبيرة والحمد لله كثيرة وسبحان الله بكرة وأصيلة وصلى الله على النبي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وآله وسلم تسليما كثيرة. So whatever the author he said here, he said that it's recommended that this is said between each of the takbirat of the Salat al Eid. Where did they get this from? It's narrated in the books of Sunan, like. Ahmad, Abu Dawood, Nisa, and others, and also Ibn Mulaqin, a famous hadith scholar, he said in Al-Badal Al-Manir that the hadith is authentic. So Ibn Masudin, radiyallahu anhu, this author of Ibn Masudin, radiyallahu anhu, su'ila ma yaqul bayna takbirat. Ibn Masudin, radiyallahu anhu, the companion was asked, what do you say or what should be said between the takbirat of Eid? 
He said, Yahmadullah ta'ala wa yuthni alayhi wa yusalli ala Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He said, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is to be praised and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's virtues are to be extolled and the salah upon Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is to be made. So those who take this athar to be authentic, they hold that it's sunnah to do this between the takbirat. وَإِنْ أَحَبَّ قَالَ غَيْرَ ذَلِكَ And if the person wishes to do so, he can say other than that. Why? The author of the ulama, they say, because nothing is established directly from the Prophet ﷺ himself. Rather, the athar that we just mentioned was from Ibn Masood in radiallahu anhu. And what gives credence to the athar of Ibn Masood, to those who hold that opinion, is not only that it's an authentic statement of Ibn Masood, but there's no mukhalafa known. There's, no, there's nothing else narrated from any other companions that um, went against what Ibn Masood in radiallahu anhu was saying. So that is what gives uh, credence and authority to that opinion. And here, where the author says, وَإِنْ أَحَبَّ قَالَ غَيْرَ ذَلِكَ If the person wishes to do so, he can say other than that. What they, what they mean here is because the Prophet ﷺ, nothing is narrated authentically from the Prophet ﷺ himself. That's why if you want to do other than what Ibn Masood said, then you could do so. Or like Uthaymin ta'ala said, if you wanted to do so, just remain silent. Each situation is permissible and each situation is okay. Whether you say something else or you remain silent in between the takbirat instead of saying what Ibn Masood uh, encouraged the people to say. The author he says, ثُمَّ يَقْرَأُ جَهْرًا And then the Prophet ﷺ, the sunnah is that the person leading the salah, he recites the salah loudly. And of course, we know that generally in the salah, in the prayers of the daytime, the person shouldn't recite loudly. But however, with regards to Jummah, Salat al-Istisqa, and uh, Salat al-Eid, and any other prayer which was done uh, for the community in a, such a large gathering, then the Prophet وسلم, as mentioned by Ibn Qayyim in Zad al-Ma'ad, would always recite loudly in those salawat. So it's sunnah to recite loudly. فِي الْأُولَى بَعْدِ الْفَاتِحَةِ بِسَبِّحْ إِسْمَ رَبِّكَ الْأَعْلَى In the first raka, in the first raka after Surah Al-Fatiha, you recite Surah Al-Sabbih إِسْمَ رَبِّكَ الْأَعْلَى وَبِالْغَاشِيَةِ فِي الثَّانِيَةِ And Surah Al-Ghashiya in the second raka. This is sunnah to do. فَإِذَا سَلَّمَ خَطَبَ خُطْبَتَيْنْ خَخُطْبَتَيْ الْجُمَعَةِ And if when the Imam has finished from the taslim of the two raka'a, then it's sunnah that he gives two khutbah, like the khutbah of Juma, Meaning that the khutbah of Eid has the same rulings as the khutbah of Juma in how it should be performed, performed and in the fact that people should be listening to it, etc. Um, so we said there's two khutbahs. And the interesting thing to note is that some of the mashayikh like Sheikh Uthaymin rahimahullah ta'ala, Sheikh Muqbil al-Wadi rahimahullah ta'ala, Sheikh al-Albani rahimahullah ta'ala and others, they held that it's valid to even hold one khutbah. Rather than do two, it's valid to hold one because the Prophet sallallahu it was narrated from him that after doing one khutbah, he would then turn to the women and he would admonish the women that were there witnessing the Eid Salah. So the Prophet sallallahu according to those ulama, only did one khutbah. But the uh, overwhelming majority, including the, those in the madhab, the Hanbali scholars, they say two khutbah is what should be done in the uh, in the Eid khutbahs. It should be two khutbahs. The author, he says, يَسْتَفْتِحُ الْأُولَى بِتِسْعِي takbirat. He means that the khutbah, the khutbah should be opened, the first khutbah and the second khutbah, should be opened with takbirat. In the first khutbah, it should be opened with nine takbirat. You say Allahu Akbar nine times. And in the second khutbah, you open it by saying Allahu Akbar seven times. Why? They say because this is the day of making takbir. This is the time that people should be making takbirat uh, for Allah Azza wa Jal. So this is uh, appropriate to be done in the khutbah of the Eid. A qawl thani fil madhab and another opinion in the madhab held by Ibn Taymiyyah and others like Ibn Qayyim and Imam Sa'di, uh, Rahimahullah Ta'ala Jami'an, may Allah have mercy upon them all. A second opinion in the madhab is that rather these two khutbahs should start as normal with the praise of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. Rather than starting with the takbir, you should start with the praise of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. But as Shaykh Uthaymin Rahimahullah Ta'ala mentioned in Sharh al it, uh, it doesn't mean that you cannot say the takbirat. Rather what you would say is you would say Alhamdulillah kathira 
wallahu akbar kabira alhamdulillah kathira wallahu akbar kabira so you make the hamd of allah azza wa jal and then you make the takbir of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so each time you do hamd of allah then you do takbir of allah azza wa jal he said this is a better way and allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best the author he said yahuthuhum fil fitr ala sadaqa that the imam when he's giving the khutbah al eid in the salah in the khutbah al eid al fitr then he encourages them to give the sadaqa, mean to give the zakat al-fitr. And he defines for them and details for them what should be given with regards to uh, zakat al-fitr in this khutbah. Can anybody think of an issue that may arise here? If the imam he gives in the khutbah of uh, Eid al-fitr, the details pertaining to uh, zakat al-fitr, etc. Can anybody think of an issue that may arise pertaining to this situation? So the Sunnah, as established by the Prophet ﷺ, clearly is that the Zakat al-Fitr is only valid if it's distributed before the Salat al-Eid. That which is distributed after Salat al-Eid is just a Sadaqah, but it's not Sadaqat al it's not Zakat al-Fitr. It's not valid as Zakat al-Fitr. That's why Shaykh al-Taymin, rahimahullah ta'ala, in his explanation, he said it's better that the Imam, he does this in the khutbah, the last khutbah of Ramadan, uh, so that the people understand that they have to distribute the zakat al-fitr before the salat al-eid. Taib, the author, he says, وَيُرَغِّبُهُمْ وَيُرَغِّبُهُمْ فِي الْأَضْحَى فِي الْأُضْحِيَّةِ وَيُبَيِّنُ لَهُمْ حُكْمُهَا With regards to the uh, khutbah of Eid al-Adha, then the uh, Imam, he would encourage the people and teach the people about the virtues of sacrificing on those days, on the Ayyam al Tashriq and Yawm al Nahar, um, which is Eid. Uh, so the Imam, he would encourage the people to sacrifice and uh, define for them what is the fiqh pertaining to that and remind them of the virtues of doing so. Because we have the hadith of Bara ibn Azib in Bukhari and Muslim where the Prophet Wasallam. It's narrated the khutbah of Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam on Yawm al-Nahar that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam on the Eid al-Nahar, on the Eid al-Adha, he gave the khutbah. And he said, Inna awwala ma nabda'u bihi fi yawmin hada an nusalli. He said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the first thing that we're going to start with is that we're going to pray. Thumma narji'a fa nanhar. Then we're going to return to our places and we're going to make the sacrifice. Faman fa'ala dhalika faqad asaba sunnatana. So whoever does that, he has perform the sunnah of ours. وَمَنْ ذَبَحَ قَبْلَ أَنْ يُصَلِّيَا فَإِنَّمَا هُوَ لَحْمٌ عَجَّلَهُ لِأَهْلِهِ And whoever does the sacrifice before he has prayed, then verily that is just meat that he has put forward to his family. لَيْسَ مِنَ النُّسَكْ فِي شَيْءٍ Not from the symbols or the, um, the worship to be done on these days in any way, shape or form. طيب. So the point being that the uh, on this Eid uh, al-Adha, the khutbah, then the, then the Imam, he encourages the people to sacrifice and he teaches them the rulings pertaining to which animal can be sacrificed and what goes along with the sacrifice in terms of fiqh. Uh, the author, he says, The author, he says that the extra takbirat in the salah, the six and the five extra takbirat in the salah, okay, salat al-Eid, a sunnah. Uh, as is the dhikr that is made between them, Allahu Akbar Kabira walhamdulillah kathira. This dhikr, that is also a sunnah. And the khutbatan are also sunnah. The two khutbah of Eid, according to the Hanbali scholars, are also sunnah. We have the hadith of Abdullah ibn Sa'ib in Al Mustadrak of Al Hakim. In the Mustadrak of Al Imam Al Hakim, collected this hadith where he said, Shahid to Ma'a Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam al Eid. He said, I witnessed the Eid prayer with the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Falamma qadda salah. So when the Prophet ﷺ had finished praying, he said, "Inna nakhtub, faman yuhibba an yajlis lil khutbati fal yajlis, wa man faman ahabba an yajlis lil khutbati fal yajlis, wa man ahabba an yadhaba fal yadhab." Then the Prophet ﷺ, after the salah, he said, "Whoever we are going to make a khutbah, whoever wishes to remain for the khutbah, then let him sit down, and whoever wishes to leave, then let him leave." So here the Prophet ﷺ is showing that it's not something which is obligatory, the khutbah of Eid, rather it's something which is sunnah, but highly recommended to do and virtuous. But if somebody needs to leave or wants to leave, they are able to leave and there's no sin or blame upon the person. However, they do lose out on reward. The author says, وَيُكْرَهُ أَتَنَفُّلُ قَبْلَ الصَّلَاةِ وَبَعْدَهَا فِي مَوْدِعِهَا It's disliked, it's makru to make salah, before the Salat al-Eid or after the Salat al-Eid in the place 
of the Musalla, in the place where the Eid is being prayed. Why? Because Ibn Abbas in Bukhari and Muslim, he says, and the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wasallam that the Prophet sallallahu on Yawm al-Fitr or Yawm al-Adha, there's a doubt from the narrator. He said that the Prophet sallallahu prayed two rak'ah, which is the two rak'ah of Eid, and he didn't pray anything before that, nor did he pray anything after that. The hadith of Ibn Abbas in Bukhari and Muslim. The author he says, وَيُسَنُّ لِمَنْ فَاتَتْهُ أَوْ بَعْضُهَا قَضَاؤُهَا عَلَى صِفَتِهَا It's recommended highly that the person who misses it or misses some of it, meaning the Eid prayer, that he makes it up as it would normally be made up, ala sifatiha, as it would normally be prayed with the Imam. So if a person he misses one raka, then he prays that raka as he would have prayed it with the Imam. If he misses the whole salah, he prays the whole salah recommended as he would have had he prayed with the Imam. Okay, even if he's alone, even if it's after the time of Zawal. Okay. Uh, if he wanted to do so, he could gather a number of people that hadn't prayed, and if they were over 40 and they were residents, then they could establish the uh, Salat al-Eid and they could do the khutbah together. Otherwise, it would just be that the person would make up the Salat as he would have prayed it with the extra takbirat and those sunan, if he wishes to do so, uh, like he would have prayed it with the Imam. Question to yourselves, which fiqh rule do we use for saying that the Salat should be prayed in qada, the way it would have been prayed in ada, meaning that you've missed the salah and you have to make it up the same way that you would have had you prayed it with the imam. It's highly recommended to. We mention a fiqh rule from time to time. Can anybody remember that rule? Okay, we mention al qada yahki al ada, the al qada yahki al ada, al ada, that the qada salah should be prayed as you would pray ada as you would pray the normal salah, that when you make up the qada salah, you would pray it as you would normally pray it, right? <coughs> Excuse me. Ibn Taymiyyah rahimahullah ta'ala and Uthaymin, as well as the Hanafi scholars, they say rather, if the salat al-Eid has passed and the time for it has passed, then it shouldn't be made up. Then the people shouldn't make up the salah. Okay, they shouldn't make up the salah. This is another opinion in the madhab, held by Ibn Taymiyyah and others. The author he says, وَيُسَنُّ أَتَكْبِيرُ الْمُطْلَقِ فِي لَيْلَتَيْ الْإِيدَيْنِ He said it's recommended to have takbir al-mutlaq, open takbir, not restricted takbir, in the two nights of the Eids, in the nights of the Eids. وَفِي فِطْرِ وَفِي فِطْرٍ آكَدْ And in uh, the Eid Salah, the night of the Eid Salah, it's more recommended. وَفِي كُلِّ عَشْرِ ذِي الْحَجَّةِ In all of the days of ذِي uh, الْحَجَّةِ it's highly recommended that you have takbirat al-mutlaq, meaning not uh, not restricted to the salawat. The author, he said here in this sentence that I just read to you, he said that on the fitr, that the Eid al-Fitr, it's more stressed. Why is it more stressed on Eid al-Fitr? Because Allah says in Surah Al-Baqarah, وَلِتُكَبِّرُ اللَّهَ وَلِتُكْمِلُ الْأَدَّةَ وَلِتُكَبِّرُ اللَّهَ عَلَى مَا حَدَاكُمْ وَلَعَلَّكُمْ تَشْكُرُونَ Okay, in this verse, Allah is instructing people to make takbirat out of thanks for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this verse is revealed according to the ulama of tafsir regarding to Eid al-Fitr, okay? Eid al-Fitr. <clears throat> so it's more stressed on Eid al-Fitr to make the takbirat. Um, we said, the author, he said that these takbirat are mutlaq, okay? Mean that they're unrestricted. And the ulama, they mean la yuqayyid bi zaman aw makan, that these mutlaq takbirat this word mutlaq means that it's not connected to a time or a place but yushra fi kulli waqt rather you can make the takbirat in any time of that day or the time that you can make it and in, in any place <clears throat> so Eid al-Fitr it's going to be from the Maghrib the night before Eid or the night of Eid until the Eid Salah okay this is when the takbirat will be made وفي إيد الأضحى and with regards to إيد الأضحى من أول أيام العشر ذي الحجة إلى صلاة العيد then it's going to be done from the beginning of the ten days until the صلاة العيد okay so this is pertaining to تكبيرات المطلق those open unrestricted تكبيرات the author he says والمقيد عقب كل فريدة في جماعة with regards to the تكبيرات which is مقيد restricted تكبيرات these are to be done after every Fadd Salah, which is prayed in Jama'ah. So Muqayyid, 
هو الذي ما كان هو زمانه محددا بأدبار صلوات الفرائض The muqayyid means that the time and the place for these salah are defined and attached to the obligatory, obligatory salawat. So it's restricted to the obligatory salawat after the prayer has been done. That is when you can make the takbir in this situation. Okay, so for in, in the madhab that you can only do it if you prayed in jama'ah and the salah is finished, then you can make the takbirat. So if you had prayed by yourself and not in jama'ah, not in congregation, then it's not sunnah upon you, it's not legislated upon you to make the takbirat of uh, in these in the, at this time. Okay, so it's not mutlaq, mutlaq was the open takbirat. These are takbirat which are muqayyid, muqayyid. They are restricted to praying in Salat al jamaa and once the jamaa, once the prayer is over. The author, he says, min Salat al-Fajr yawma arrafa, that the muqayyid, the takbirat al-muqayyid, it starts, the restricted takbirat, they start from Salat al-Fajr on the day of Arafah. Okay, these are for the people who are not on Hajj. However, he says, وَلِلْ مُحْرِمْ مِنْ صَلَاتِ الظَّهْرِ يَوْمَ النَّحْرِ However, for the one who is on Hajj, the Muhrim, his takbirat al-muqayyid, his restricted takbirat to the Salahs are going to be starting from uh, Salat al-Dhuhr on the day of Eid. Okay, so the one who is not praying, the one who is not on Hajj, they will start from Fajr of Yawm al-Arafah. And the one who is on Hajj, they will start on Dhuhr, from Dhuhr, on the day of Eid. And both of them will continue, both groups of people will continue to ila Asr, Akhir Ayyam Tashriq until Asr on the last day of Ayyam Tashriq. The last of the Ayyam Tashriq is the 13th, right? The three days of Tashriq is the uh, the 11th, the 12th and the 13th. So the last of them will be the 13th uh, and the Asr Salah will be the last one. Tayyib. The author he says, وَإِن نَسِيَهُ قَضَاهُ If these takbirat al-muqayyid, the ones which are connected to the salawat in jama'ah, if they are forgotten by a person, he should make them up. مَا لَمْ يُحْدِثْ As long as the person doesn't break his wudu, أَوْ يَخْرُجْ مِنَ الْمَسْجِدِ Or leaves the masjid. So these takbirat which are muqayyid, which are restricted, if the person forgets them or leaves them whatever, for whatever reason, he should make them up. Okay? As long as he doesn't uh, leave the masjid, because he, if he leaves the masjid, then the ulama they say هذه سنة فاتت محلها. Then this is a sunnah; its place has now uh, gone. Its time and place has now gone. You shouldn't do it after this place because it's restricted to the salawat al faraid to the obligatory salawat. Imam Ibn Qudama rahimahullah taala he said it's not restricted to the fact that the person. Uh, shouldn't make it up if he breaks wudu or he shouldn't make them up if he leaves the masjid he said rather it's restricted to tool al fasl that if there is a long gap between him and the time of when he should have done the takbirat then in this situation then the person shouldn't make up uh, the takbirat it's not to do according to ibn qudama as the author said with regards to not, to breaking wudu and to leaving the masjid Tayyip. and allah knows best the author he says, وَلَا يُسَنُّ عَقِبَ صَلَاةِ عِيدٍ These takbirat which are muqayyid, these restricted takbirat are not to be done after Salat al-Eid. Why? Because after Salat al-Eid, um, even though it's a day of making takbir, it's understood to be recommended here, but he said no. Why? Because the author is going to get up and he's going to make a khutbah and the people are going to listen to the imam making the khutbah. So if people start to make the takbirat, then there's going to be tashwish, there's going to be a lot of noise. And also, uh, now, the author he says, وصفته شفعن, and the way to do the takbirat of the Eid is shafan to do it in pairs, like you would say, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, La ilaha illallah, Wallahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Wallillah alhamd. This is the way that it should be done. So now this particular sigha, this particular narration, this style is narrated in from Ibn Masud radiyallahu anhu in the Musannaf of Ibn Abi Shayba. Okay, it's authentic. And Ibn Taymiyyah rahimahullah ta'ala, he said that this is from the most reported ways of doing it from the Sahaba. That from the most reported ways of doing this uh, takbirat from the Sahaba is that they would do it in this manner. They would say, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, la ilaha illallah, Wallahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, walillahi alhamd. And by this we come to the end of what needs to be mentioned in this chapter of uh, the issues pertaining to Salat al-Eid. And anything which was correct was from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Shortcomings and mistakes from myself is shaitan. 
if you have any questions then feel free wa jazakumullahu khairan